it's time to deck the halls with constant stress and consumption. Or is it? Maybe this year you give yourself the gift of simplicity. Hi, I'm Corby Mitleid, and this is the Psychic Yellow Brick Road. The world is changing, and life doesn't have the spark it used to. So we look around and ask, where do I need to go to catch the magic again? You've found it. Welcome to the Psychic Yellow Brick Road, a weekly podcast that delves into the intuitive world, metaphysics, life purpose, and how to connect with the compassion of spirituality. I'm Corby Mitleid, and I've been on the Psychic Yellow Brick Road for 50 years. I'm a certified tarot master, past life specialist, psychic medium, channel, and author. And most importantly, I'm an elder in the field, ready to pass on everything I've discovered to you. So let's hit that Psychic Yellow Brick Road where you can find the real wizards and avoid the flying monkeys. How to Magically Simplify Your Holidays Friday was the day that starts the official holiday season in the U.S. And between Black Friday and Cyber Monday, you've got four days of red and green madness for retailers, gift givers, and everyone else for whom things are wildly important. So you might think that this is a very strange road trip in terms of timing. Actually, it's not. The next four weeks are some of the most stressful of the year for countless people who feel they have to live up to all the hype, that they have to fill their lives with more, more, more in order to be part of the holiday spirit. You know, I'm here to tell you that you don't. At the very least, you can take some of the pressure off yourself in small but telling ways. So this holiday season of 2023, put yourself on the list first and give yourself the chance to try some of these ideas to simplify your life and make room for what really matters. They'll cost you nothing but a little time, a little thought, and a little re-envisioning of the life you live every day. Number one, be conscious. Doing things automatically or without thinking is the cause of more unnecessary stuff in your life than you can imagine. Look at anything you're considering buying for people and ask yourself, is this a gift from the heart or seasonal guilt? Look at every relationship and notice, does this relationship support me, drain me, or provide balanced energy for me? Look at your habitual thoughts and decide, are they true for me? Are they useful? Are they healing? Number two, detach your identity from your belongings. We're not our jobs, our family titles, our sports teams, our new car, our bells and whistle computer, or our name brand clothes. We are not the level of decorating or obvious holiday cheer either, or even the presents we buy for others. These material items don't determine what we're worth. When you accept that you aren't defined by what you own or give, life gets infinitely easier. Number three, eat slowly without distractions. The holidays are a time when there are always cookies or cocktails or special meals that we've been taught we have to try. It's the only time of year they're around after all. Give yourself the gift of being present with your food. It's a small change, but enjoying our food is such an important lesson in teaching ourselves what enough is. Savor what you have. Be conscious of what you put in your mouth without the distraction of a book or television or other sensory diversions. And remember that the cookies were always there last year and the year before. They are not once-in-a-lifetime unicorns. When we're aware of what we're eating and let ourselves really enjoy it, we usually eat less. Number four, evaluate commitments and time takers. There are so many tasks we've done for years, promises we made long ago, where both parties have forgotten why they were made, and routines so ingrained in our schedules that we're not even aware we're doing them. The holidays are no different. Whether it's expected get-togethers, secret Santa exchanges for people you barely know, or events that perhaps you've outgrown but still feel you have to do, rethink them. 
Look at anything that requires your participation and ask yourself if it moves you forward or nourishes you in any way. And after the holidays, examine what you do year-round. If volunteering at the local animal shelter or being a big brother or big sister nourishes you, as well as those you help, then keep it on your list. But if what you're examining no longer feels like a valuable part of your life, or you do it out of guilt rather than genuine desire, put it on the dump pile. Five, go for quality, not quantity. I learned this one from my frugal by nature husband. If we have a large purchase to make, a new refrigerator, a lawn tractor, a car, we spend time weighing our options, looking at consumer ratings, and finding out where we can get the best deal. Then we buy the best we can afford, and it lasts for a long time. Try paying that kind of attention to smaller purchases this Christmas. Two kitchen gadgets might be on the shelf, and the lesser one may be on sale. But if duplicates have to replace the original in the span of two years, they're no bargain if the other slightly pricier gadget gives you years of service. In that case, paying more up front may be better in the long run. And for the holidays, don't think about the present to one-up last year's. Don't think about seeing if there can be more presents under the tree or by the menorah. Pare it down to what's important, what would be treasured. Six, limit your media consumption. During the holidays, the relentless buy, buy, buy of every commercial, every screen pop-up, even the ads we're now forced to watch at the gas pump can be overwhelming. Turn away, mute the sound, click past. For instance, in our household, we automatically mute every single pharmaceutical commercial. Why? We don't want to hear about diseases we don't have or need to think about. Every other commercial is about the diabetes we're sure to develop or the heart attack waiting for us around the corner. Even normal body glitches are now touted as diseases if it will sell another drug. Did you know you could have used-to-be-normalitis or UTBNI? Ask your doctor if Fix It Up Right is right for you. The fears these commercials seek to instill in us lead us to pester our doctors about yet another pill we'd never have known about had Big Pharma not warned us we couldn't live without it. Bluntly, advertising is advertising. We can live without 98% of what they promote, but marketing folks are good at seducing you without your being aware of it. The less you let advertising enter your consciousness, the less you'll want. It's that simple. Number seven, let's get back to the idea of enough. Redefine the concept of enough. The best example of not understanding enough comes from my grandmother's ideas on food. Eat one more bite than you want, then you've had enough. How many pairs of shoes is enough? How many boxes of pasta is enough? How much vacation is enough? How much self-time is enough? How many holiday obligations are enough? Maybe none? Be conscious when it comes to what enough is. Your version may differ from someone else's, but that's okay. The only one who has a say in what enough means for you is you. Number eight, reduce, reuse, recycle. We're not talking about hoarding everything just in case you need to use it later. However, it pays to remember the maxim from the 1930s depression years. Use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Figure out how you can consolidate several things into one. Find ways to turn one no longer used thing into a new, wow, this is useful thing. Take the time to separate out plastics and cardboard and get them to the recycling plant. Wade through your clothes, the kids' toys, and anything else of which you have multiples and get them to a second-hand center so others who have less can find and cherish them for the holiday season. And look especially at things you got or gave in holidays past that are still pristine, never used, perhaps even in the original wrapping. That should give you a big clue as to what is no longer necessary. Number nine, simplify your wardrobe. 
This tip is both hard and easy. I'm a close horse, I know. Hard because we all have items we love that we only get to wear occasionally or pull out on a special occasion to match that perfect but rarely donned item. We all know that when we have multiples of items, some of them never get used. Try the old hanger reversal trick. Put all your hangers backward on the bar. When you wear something, put the hanger back the way you would normally. After six months or a year, look at all the hangers that are still backward. Notice what never got worn. Do you really need it? Do you still love it? If not, out it goes. Do the same for shoes, jewelry, and anything clothing related. Find a way to see what you are and are not using. If you don't use it, send it off to someone who will. And really, nobody's going to remember the holiday outfit you wore last year. Wear it again, and I promise no one will accuse you of being a Scrooge. Tenth and last, stop worrying about norms or what is expected of you. The biggest advice is saved for last because so much of what we have or do has been dictated by what others think we should have or do or even be. When you let go of listening to others' judgments of you and what you surround yourself with, you'll find it wonderfully easy to slow down consumption. You'll be able to pare stuff down to what you really love. You'll stop looking over your shoulder for validation. Wayne Dyer said it best. What other people think of me is none of my business. Finally, remember this. If you want to create simplicity in your holiday season, think of life as a tiny house. And who lives in yours? You do. Simplify the holidays this year. Simplify your list of gotta have, gotta be, gotta get done. And you'll have a lot more time to just be with your family and friends which just may be the biggest holiday gift you can possibly give them. I've been guiding friends and clients since 1973. I love showing you opportunities and how to grab them, where the tough stuff is and how to get through it, and handing you your toolbox through tarot and oracle cards, past life exploration, spirit guides and angelic conferences, and mediumship. My website, corbymitlie.com, is full of articles, blogs, where to find me for live appearances, and where to listen to me as I guest on other podcasts. There's a full menu of readings, from short burning questions all the way up to the jewel in the crown, my soul plan readings, which are based on the work I did with Robert Schwartz. Whether it's general questions about your life in practical terms, romance readings, business consultations, discovering your sentence of passion, or digging into that single challenge that has run through your life you can find the appointment that's right for you. You know, your opinion matters a lot. So if you enjoy this, take a few minutes to leave a review. Word of mouth is key with podcasts, so share it with others. And if you really want to help make the magic happen, go find me at patreon.com. There's a tier called I Believe in You. And for just a couple of dollars a month, you can be an official roadie and help all the things I do the podcast, the books, the classes, the videos keep on coming. This has been Corby Mitlide. And until next time, keep those ruby slippers polished and I'll meet you on the Psychic Yellow Brick Road. <laughs>